Longboats, swords, and women fighting while they're pregnant? That's right. Top 10 messed up things that Vikings did to their wives, part two. Number 10. Unfaithful. Viking warriors were large, strong, tough, and rough men who drank like fish and partied like it was 1999. And remember, I do. I wouldn't go as far as to call the Coastal Raiders gentlemen, since, well, they were not gentlemen. It's fair to say that they weren't exactly so nice to their women. For example, it wasn't that uncommon for a Viking male to take a bed with his wife. It was also not uncommon for a Viking man to take a bed with someone other than his wife. Which, unless you're a collection of certain people from Utah, that's not okay. Not that I'm here to judge anyone from Utah or the Vikings, but I believe if you fall in love, you gotta stay within those boundaries of that marriage. It's just traditionally a two-person party, not four or five. Number nine, revenge. Signy was a sweet lass who unfortunately married King Seeger, a rather nasty and brutal king. He would earn his malicious title when he had Signy's family unalived, except for her and her twin brother. But wait, there's more. Signy then plotted revenge with her sibling by meeting up with a sorcerer who changed her appearance. She then went back to her brother where they engaged in three nights of awkwardness and shame only a family watching in Force Ghost form could witness. She then changed forms again to give birth to her son that would assist in her revenge. Eventually, they overthrew the Mad King and set him on fire for his misdeeds, where she then also willingly walked into the fire because she felt like she was no longer fit to live. That is one wild story. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, I guess. Number 8. Love Triangle There once was a maiden so fair and so beautiful, apparently the most beautiful and smart. Sounds like a winner to me. Gudrun was her name, and she was stuck in an unfortunate love triangle. Kajartan and Boli were friends and foster cousins. Kajartan immediately fell for the beautiful Gudrun. His father, however, did not exactly approve of this fling, as he felt she was kind of sus due to her previous marital adventures. So while holding Kajartan back, Boli went to swoon the beautiful lass. This worked. However, shortly after being distracted by a trip, Gujartan finds out that his love is now in an entanglement with his best friend Boli. This leads to a confrontation where Kajartan is struck with one blow by Boli that claims his life. Boli instantly filled with regret, the same way Anakin felt when confronting Palpatine and Mace Windu, and a what have I done sort of moment. It was awkward, but their story was a little bit easier to understand. I don't know, bad dialogue. Number seven, Volun the Smith. Volun the Smith was in love with a Valkyrie, which honestly is just really cool. Come on, I mean, who gets to be in, in love with a Valkyrie? And after a brief marriage, the Valkyrie had to go back to what they do best, which is to pick up soldiers who have perished in battle. As Volund was going full Marvin's room over the grief of his loss, he was kidnapped by a king who imprisoned him to marry his daughter. The king was so serious that he had Volund's hamstrings cut, so he could not escape his captivity. So to get back at the king, he slayed his two sons and fashioned a goblet with jewels made from their eyes. Knocked up the king's daughter and blew that popsicle stand. Sure, it wasn't his wife yet exactly, but she was going to be if he hadn't have turned her brothers into everyone's least favorite set of dinnerware. Take note of this one, folks. Don't do this one at home. Number six, Leif Erikson Day. Yes, the very same from SpongeBob SquarePants. Leif Erikson, the first European to land in North America. Hundreds of years before everyone's new, least favorite explorer, Christopher Columbus, discovered the Americas. A Viking man leads an expedition that honestly must have been just the worst. Sea travel just wasn't great back then. This really was a huge moment in history, one for the ages. But imagine breaking the news to his wife. Listen, honey, I know you've been hard at work cleaning and cooking and taking care of our children. And we both know I've been a great husband with all my drinking and fighting and all the mistresses I may or may not keep. So I just want you to know that I'm going to sail across the ocean for months and build a settlement in a completely different corner of the earth. Okay, bye. <laughs> See you later. Yeah, I'll write you. <laughs> Number five, Eric the Red. Probably the most infamous Viking who ever lived and the father of Leif Erikson was Eric the Red. He earned this name most likely because of his gorgeous red hair and beard, or it could be because he's the bloodthirsty Viking of your worst nightmares. When you think of the classic Viking, this is really what comes to mind. A drinking brute who could cleave a man in twain with a swing of his war axe. What I'm getting at is, getting bloodstains out of clothes is difficult today, but imagine what it was like back then. Yikes! Ladies, how many times has your husband come home from his blue collar job and just gotten himself into a mess? 
Also, take your boots off before you come into the house, dude. Come on, that's just not cool. Eric the Red most likely did the same. However, he was not covered in mustard from lunch or grease stains in the garage, but rather the fluids that can only come from separating body parts from unwilling donors. I get lightheaded just thinking about it. No thanks. Number four, strong, independent woman. Freitas was sister of Leif Erikson and daughter of Eric the Red. She had some strong blood in her. While not exactly Leif's wife, this story is just too messed up to not tell. This one goes to all the mothers out there. Remember your first child. Remember the joys of your first pregnancy. For some lucky women, this is an easy experience. But for others, well, for others, it's difficult to say the least. You might notice that your body is changing and all of a sudden, you're really craving food you haven't had in a long time. You may also feel a little queasy in the morning and many other little fun things that happen. Well, Freitas, the sister of Leif Erikson, went on that North American expedition with him whilst pregnant, which I can also imagine was just a beautiful pleasure cruise. However, her level of seasickness is not what's so messed up here, but rather that she had to defend herself by swinging a sword whilst very pregnant. That's a down bad woman right there. Number three, red flags. Dating can be fun. You get to meet new people and experience new things, mini golf, movies maybe even some nice restaurants. However, sometimes when we go on dates, they make better stories than experiences. Sometimes people give off red flags. People who put ketchup on pizza is a red flag for me. That's that's wrong, don't, don't do that. Meet Egil Skalgrimason. No, he didn't put ketchup on pizza, but he was a mean, no good, rotten man of a Viking but apparently was also an excellent poet. As the legends go, he got his first taste of blood when he was seven, when another young man crossed him. He then reached for his ax. You know what happens next. He grew up to be just the way you think Vikings grow up to be, and his violence carried on throughout his life. However, unlike most barbaric coastal raiders of the time, Eagle was also thought to be somewhat of a prolific writer, as his poems are considered to be some of the best from ye olde Scandinavia. Ladies, I don't have to tell you how toxic this is, right? This is a big red flag energy. Imagine getting in a brutal confrontation with him, and then he turns around and makes it into a compelling poem. Red flags all the way. No thanks. Number two, pay to win. Ragnar Lodbach isn't just a name that sounds like he could be a Dovahkiin from Skyrim. It's a name that struck fear into many Anglo and Franco kingdoms at the time. You never know when someone like Ragnar would show up in a boat with 30 other burly Vikings and just mess up your day royally. One royal that did not want his day being royally screwed up by Ragnar paid him to stop Vikingizing his village. Vikingizing is a word I'm gonna use. Which honestly is like asking water not to be wet. Yes, water is wet, the debate starts and ends there. Perhaps Ragnar was actually close in similarities to the Dovahkiin, as I find it's easier to stop using my dragon shout when gold comes my way. Well, if he had to be paid off like a goon for hire, you could imagine how sweet and caring he was to his wives. Yeah, probably not, no. Number one, Vikings. Look, this is another broad stroke, but guys, these are Vikings, and this was ye olde Europe. Yes, women did have more freedoms than others in Viking society, but it's, it's just not a good time. And honestly, if you try looking through any lens of the present into the past, you're gonna find some things you don't like. Vikings were Vikings, and unfortunately for women at the time, that just meant they got the raw end of the deal for a multitude of reasons. Whew. Glad we live in today, not then. That's gonna wrap it up for me today, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. And if you too want a Fos Ruda, then check my socials link down in the description. I've been your host, Big Ched, and stay sweet, my little honeybees. They, they would full on just cut someone in half, and then just be like, oh, time to eat a sandwich. Cut, Ugh, gross. Immediately fell for the beautiful Gordon. Gordon? Not Gordon, G Gordon. Gud Gudrun, Gudrun.